All right, in this video, I'm going to show you this cube to sphere transformation that we have as well as the rotation we have here too. This is going to be using a cube. We're going to be adjusting the rounding of the cube and then we're going to be using some grid instancers to create these layers and then have these rotation effects. Now, inspiration for this tutorial came from another MO2 user and they actually found a video of another YouTube user who uses Cinema 4D. Ironically, I had already subscribed to this user. I've been following quite a few YouTube videos on Cinema 4D, but uh, it's this effect here. It's pretty much the same animation that you saw back at the beginning of the video, except we're going to make this using MO2. Fatu Tutorials is the guy who creates this and he has some pretty cool Cinema 4D animations. I'll leave a link to this video in the pinned comment below. Now for this blank project, I'm going to go 1080, 30 frames per second, and I'm actually going to use 161 frames. Now using 30 frames per second and 161 frames is important. It's going to make the math, the little bit of math that you see here, it's going to make it a lot easier to do. And not only that, notice I'm starting at frame zero. This is just going to make it easier for us to add 20. And you'll see what I'm talking about right here in a second. Even though I had 161 frames set up in my project browser, notice we end on frame 160, and that is because we are starting at frame zero. To do this, go to motion, preferences, and do your frame numbering to start from zero. This makes the math a lot easier. So let's go ahead and load up MO2. I'm going to leave the timeline and the keyframe window open because we will be adding some keyframes. And let's go ahead and add a cube. The sizing is fine by default, and what we want to mess with is the rounding of this cube. And notice if I drag the radius, we can turn this cube into almost a sphere. And right around 0.5 is where we want to be, but notice it's kind of got some jagged edges to it. Let's just crank up the segments, and now we have a sphere. Now this is going to be the bottom layer of our three layer piece. At frame zero, I want a cube, but I don't want it to be a perfect cube with 90 degree edges. I want a little bit of rounding, maybe somewhere around 0.1. I'm going to go ahead and add a keyframe there. I'm going to fast forward 20 frames, and now I want it to be a sphere. Then I'm going to fast forward 20 more frames, up to frame 40, and I still want it to be a sphere at this point. So I'm just going to keyframe that. And you'll see the keyframes down here. We're increasing the radius, then we're keeping it the same, and now we're going to go 20 more frames to frame 60, and now we want it to go back down to 0.1. Let's let it hang out at 0.1 for 20 additional frames, up at frame 80, so I'm going to keyframe it without changing the value, up 20 more frames, and now we're going to go back up to 0.5. Let's let it hang out there for 20 frames, so keeping it the same, up 20 more frames, and now we can go back down to 0.1. So if I scrub the playhead here, you're going to see that it goes to a sphere, it stays there, then it goes back to a cube, or almost a cube, it hangs out, then it becomes a sphere, it hangs out and then it starts to transition back to a cube. This is exactly what we want and we want it to end on frame 140. Now let's go ahead and create our lower layer and to do this we need to use an instancer. And we want to use the grid one. Let's drop the cube inside of there. And I'm just going to dolly on out with my camera so we do see that we have a grid. But we don't want to do all three layers at one time. We only want to do the bottom layer. So we're going to change some of the settings in our instancer. The count for Y, let's set it down to one. That way we have one layer. And just to keep the math simple again too, since this is my lower layer, I'm gonna take the position Y and I'm gonna set it to negative one just to move it down. Because then we'll put the middle one in and then we'll put the top one in. So now that we have the cubes and the spheres transitioning, we want some rotation of this entire instancer, this entire layer to occur. And since we are in this instancer here, if we change the rotation Y, that's how we can get this thing to rotate. So setting that back to zero. But I don't want the rotation to occur right as this transition from cubes to spheres is forming. I actually want it to occur between it. And if you recall, we did frame zero to frame 20. So I want this rotation to start at frame 10. I'm going to set the rotation Y to zero and keyframe it. Fast forward 20 frames to frame 30. Now I want it to rotate 90 degrees. And just like with the rounding from the cubes and the spheres, we let it chill or hang out at a certain spot. We want to do the same thing here. Let's go forward 20 more frames and let's just keyframe it at that same 90 degrees. Let's go up 20 more. And now we want it to rotate to 180. That is an additional 90 degrees. 
up 20 more frames, letting it hang out at 180, up 20 more frames, letting it go up an additional 90 degrees to 270, up to 130 frames, letting it chill, and then up to 150, let's go all the way around to 360. And now if I scrub this, notice we have the spheres, and as it's transitioning, we are rotating. Then it's gonna stop, and then as it stops, watch this. We're gonna start changing back to the cube, and as we're doing that, we're rotating. This is exactly what we want to happen. Now from here, we can duplicate this. I'm gonna call that first one I did the bottom. I'm gonna call this second one the middle. And with that middle instancer selected, I'm going to set its Y position to zero. And here's the trick. We want to slide all of these keyframes up five frames. So here's one way we can do that quickly. But before I do that, I'm just gonna come in here and then right in the middle of the tutorial, the window here went out on me, so I had to save it and reload it back up, but it's still the same setup. I had to add a different camera so I can get somewhat of that same view back. But anyway, I mentioned that with this new layer that we've copied over, we want to take these keyframes and we want to slide them all forward five frames. So this is going from the bottom to the middle. So notice I'm in my middle, and notice I'm talking about my basic rotation Y. I'm going to select all of those and make sure my interpolation is set to linear. And it's a good idea to do this for all of them as well. As a matter of fact, I'm gonna quickly come back and do that for my bottom. And I'm just gonna fit these into view as well. So now we have our middle. We want to take all of these keyframes and we want to shift them forward five frames. So right now this was starting on frame 10. So if I have all of them selected, I'm gonna hold shift and I'm gonna drag this over until I see 15. And you might not be able to see it, but there's a little tiny number down there and it was right there. I know I'm on frame 15 now. And just to check that, I'm going to advance to this keyframe. I am on 15 and we are doing that same jump every 20 frames. That's a quick way to jump them all up the same number of frames. Let's come and do this for the rounding of our cubes to spheres. Selecting all the keyframes, and this one started on zero, so if I hold shift and drag, I want this to go to five. And just to check that, I'm gonna to come to the rounding and I'm going to bump up to that first keyframe. We are on frame five, and we are jumping every 20 frames. So that's all we have to do for that second layer. And if I scrub the playhead, you're gonna to start to see that pattern of rotation already forming. Now we need a third layer, our top layer, and then we're going to move those keyframes, five additional keyframes again. So duplicating it, calling it the top. And I did duplicate the middle, by the way, because now we're gonna take those keyframes that we just shifted and we're gonna shift them five additional frames. So my basic rotation Y, selecting all of them, and I'm gonna hold shift on this one that's on 15 and I want to drag it up to 20. And there we go, right there. Let's come to our cube, selecting all the keyframes. This one was on frame five, so I want to bump this up to frame 10. And making sure everything is good. We're on frame 10 there, perfect. Now the only thing here is we need to move that top layer up, so position Y, typing in a one. Now we have three layers, and if we scrub this, we have our rotation with our animations. And it's up to you to come in here and change your materials, change your lighting to get the look that you wanna get. Feel free to grab my project over in my MO2 files. A link for that is in the description. And yeah, there you have it. Take an inspiration from a Cinema 4D tutorial and actually applying those animations in MO2. If you have any questions, leave a comment below. And that's it for this video. I hope it helps.